Well, it's a gorgeous morning here in Weedill, and we're doing our walk. There's old Indy, there's old Billy. And coming up to the Bales, this is where Tales from the Bales came, but now it's Bailey's Tales. And this is his proper holiday, his first real proper holiday camping with his dad. I bought a tent so as we could go walking. And we've had a couple of goes in the garden, just a couple of nights in the garden twice. That worked fine. And then I've been up in Northumberland, I stopped at my friend's house, but I cheated, I put the tent in his garden as well. But now we're going off to Filingthorpe, which is near Robin Hood's Bear. And the campsite, Middlewood Farm, that we're going to stop at is 13.9 miles from Scarborough. And it's, I think it's nine miles from Whitby. So we're going to do Scarborough tomorrow. We're going to Deer, get all set up and have a look down Robin Hood's Bay. Scarborough tomorrow and then Whitby on Thursday. But what we're going to do is walk to Scarborough and I've checked out with Aviva the bus times. And yes, you can take the dogs on the buses and we'll get the bus back. So this is our early morning walk. Three mile we do before work normally and then two mile after work, but we're on holiday this week. So, Indy's going to stay at home and have a girly few days with her mum. I think we're going to do the nails. So, anyhow, we shall show the next part of the film where we get ourselves set up in the camp field. Here we are, we've just arrived at Middlewood Farm. As you can see, that was Bailey's travelling compartment. And then the other ones, which is Indy's, which is filled with all our gear. There, the car's full with all the tent gear uh, I've been told to pitch in between 51 and 52 so that the ground can recover so I have to put it right in the centre here so there's our pitch there not sure which way the sun's up there so I think it might set over that side so I'm going to start get the tent pitched if you want to see how I pitch the tent have a look at my other YouTube that we've got because we've got one pitching the tent in the garden and, but this is our first real holiday, isn't it, soon? We're going to enjoy it. So there we are, the footprints down. They've asked us to go between the two posts because they want the grass to regenerate on each side. So I'll get the tent out next, put that down. Bailey's just quite happy sitting in the sun, aren't you, son? He's good lad, we can take you on a beach soon. Lovely. That's it, we're all set up. And chairs there, there's our little boy. He's been sat there all the time since I got the tent put up. He came and he sat me. Can you see? He's kind of keep his eyes closed. He's tired. It's nice and warm in here. We've got his water there. And there's the bedroom all set up in there. My sleeping bag and his bed all sorted. And around the corner there, yep, there's the port a little. Can't do without that. So there he is, lovely lad. Table, all the bits and bobs, stoves there, little kitchen unit there, which I've never used. Going to try it tonight. There's the windbreaker where we can do all of our cooking, and I can drop those down a little bit of light in. So, in total, an hour and a half, and that's from start to finish. And I wasn't rushing, so I just had fun while I was doing it. Enjoyed it, right? Should we go to the beach? Don't mm. go to the beach. Yeah, come on, then. let's go to the beach. Well, there we are. All done, dusted, sorted, everything sorted, an hour and a half. And uh, but 20 minutes the tent was up. So if it was raining, you could have the tent up in 20 minutes and then be kind of watertight and wait to stop raining to bring the stuff in from the car. But it's all done, it's just got the, everything in, coker and everything like that. This is the, the part that we stayed in. Oh, wait a minute, there's a car coming. I'll oh, just have to grab the alley. Yeah, so that's the place where we hired the caravan when Janet and I came and I thought it'd be nice to try here properly for the first time with the tent. So I'm going to walk along this road, pick up the old cinder path. In fact, I could pick the cinder path up through the side. We'll go through the side. Go on, Billy. And then uh, we can pick that up. I'm going to have a walk along to the youth hostel boggle hole. Tides right, so we can drop onto the beach and walk back along to Robin Hood's Pier. There we go. You can hear the chainsaw in the background, they must be doing some work on the trees. 
Well, it's a lovely walk down to Boggle Hall, hey, said donkeys. They're coming over. It says, yeah, I'm going to feed them or stroke them. So there we are. Lovely, aren't they? I heard them calling before. They're friendly, though. They're coming over here. Go on, Bailey. Go on. He's a bit, Bailey. That's enough. He's a bit frightened of them, I think. Yeah, that's looking over towards Robin Hood's bit. Uh, no, it's looking over towards Firing Thorpe. Go on, Bailey. And that's another site up on the hill over there. But uh, we are over here where the farm is. Another field here on the way to Boggle Hole. That's looking over to Raven Scar over there. Look at that great big fella there. He's a big handsome bull. All these horses. It's lovely. Hey, Billy. Hey. There you are. This is what you can see from the Cleveland Weaver. Tides out. That's Robin Hood's pier just over in the corner there. There's the, the beach down there. And what we'll be able to do is go down onto the beach and walk the whole length of the beach before the tide comes in and then we'll finish off at the Bay Hotel. These are the steps going down. There's quite a few of them going down into Boggle Hall. But they're pretty dry, which is good. I was never a lover of these leads and then we've not been totally sort of sure about Bailey with him being a rescue and we've had him six months now and if he's in a field he's nobody he comes back no problem at all and uh, but I think you've got to be there on the side of caution when you're not sure and again he's still under assessment because he seems pretty good with everybody he's had the odd kerfuffle with a couple of dogs but uh, for some reason, little ones seem to, and I'm, what I mean by little ones is like little tots. I don't know whether there's some history before we got him or what, but he gets himself all worked up if he says a little tot. <coughs> right, I'm ready. I'm coming. <coughs> Okie dokie. So this is Boggle Hall. And you can see the signpost there. It says the Cleveland Weir. That's across that bridge. And up, and up the hill there. And that's the way we're going to be heading tomorrow because we're going to walk the Scarborough tomorrow. And it'll, it'll be about 13, I think it's just under 14 mile. And then we'll get the bus back along to Filing Thorpe. Now we are, there must be a school group down there. Looks like a school outing. There we go. So, tide wise, we should be able to walk the full length of the beach. Of course, the tide's not high until 7 o'clock tonight needs its water. It's about, it's 5 to 3. So it's 4 hours to high tide. So we'll be able to watch the full length of the beach. And then once we get a little bit farther, there'll be nobody there in any case. So I'm going to let him off. There's some of the erosion on the side there. Can you see, just at the mouth where you come in, that's where all of the school kids are. So, right. We'll let you off the lead soon. So so I'm up the top end of the beach and as you can see there's a few people a long way ahead but there he is I've let him off the lead, chucked his ball and straight away he's straight down to the sea now it'll not be long, he'll be into the water that's what he's gone down there for but he's ran round and round let up a lot of steam which is great there we go having a good run he's been down in the water he's just met a dog uh, I think it was a Labrador called Oscar and yeah we got on well with him and he's just been smitten with another red collie little girl called Trixie. Oh they and I are running about the beach together like well it was lovely to say I should have filmed him with. Are you going to bring your ball? Are you going in the sea? Go on in the sea then. He's off back down into the sea again. That's Robin Hood's beer that we're looking at. You can see the big dam wall there to stop all of the erosion in the beer. You can't say much of Billy because he's camouflaged in amongst the seaweed. What a glorious day. For our first camping trip, we couldn't have got better weather. Well, he's wanting to cool off in the water now. It's the air sea rescue helicopter. And you to say maybe hopefully it's just on the exercises and it's not for real. 
I mean, they say it's beautiful, like, there's no white cups in here, it's gorgeous. Very close in. Here it comes up above. to the beach the tide's just coming round the rock there so wasn't able to go around the corner but we've done right along to the other end you see Raven Sky on the top of the hill there and back down so a fabulous walk and a fabulous day and he's met up with a few nice dogs this is the beer hotel this is the pub where everybody to come and dip the toe in the sea when they come to the end of the sea to sea walk I'll put a rain light in this walk. There we are, end of the walk. Bailey's on the look, watching the tide come in. I think he's watching that dog in the water. Nice pint of rain lights and a pint of soda water and some treats there for Bailey. The tide does not come in quickly. Beautiful. So that's it. Drop the covers on the windbreak so as you can see out, which is quite nice. There's the new little kitchen from Aldi. Ten and off it, $19.99, so I was pleased with that. And a little windbreak, because I found that it would be useful, especially when I was up at Ashes, it was quite windy. Little table there, and the freezer bag. Me seat, of course. And there we are, we sorted out in the tent. And here's my boy. He's tired, and look how many miles are we going to be able to? Let's have a look. We're checking on our watch. 10.61 to the but you did three before we left in here, so no seven walking down to Robinhood's Bay and right along the beach and back, then back up again. Lovely, wasn't it? You'd be hungry. I'll have some dinner. So, there we've got all the ingredients for a nice stir fry for tonight. We've got mushrooms, tomatoes, sweet and crunchy stir fry, some broccoli, cheese, bit of salami to go on it, and some eggs. So, we're going to make a nice big stir fry. And Bailey will have some of that with his biscuits. Vegetable stir fry on the go. We've got some eggs there, which have been fried. We're going to put some cheese and some salami and some tomato puree in it as well. I want a bit of Worcester sauce. Tinny sardines and tinny mackerel and tomato sauce and tomatoes and some green beans and broccoli. And here he is sitting right now. He's had his tea. He's eating that a lot. Two little bucketfuls of biscuits and some meat chunks, haven't you? And a full tin of chowney. He's going to get some stir fry as well, aren't you? Good boy, aren't you? Eh? You Billy. Eh? Good lad. Get some eggs. So that's all the ingredients. It's mixed vegetables, broccoli, cheese. There's smoked cheese. There's some cheddar with onion and beans, stir fry, tomatoes, tin of mackerel in tomato sauce and tinny sardines in tomato sauce and just let it stir fry and then I'll put a bit of Worcester sauce on it and he's had some of the eggs in there oh he's eating them already they've gone already <laughs> there we go so I'm looking forward to that Lovely sky, and the site is pretty full. There's a lot of nice clamping pods along there. I'm right at the end there where the clamping pods finish. So, um, interesting to see how we sleep, won't it, Billy Boy? Eh? I'm sure we'll be all right. Lovely red sky. So, we'll have a cuppa and then we'll. Uh, We'll call it a night, eh? Up early in the morning to walk to Scarborough. There we are, seven o'clock. Here's the boy here. We take him for a little walk and I'll put him in the car so as long as he's in a shower. Yeah, should we do that? There's our tent over there. 
but next to it is another air floor but it's got a porch on it and look at it, it virtually doubles the size of the, uh, the tent it's got like two porches and then the bedroom but there's all the rest on there farmers up in the field working already and we've just had a walk around the field so now I'm going to go and try out the shower blocks and myself a shower Lovely clean shower block. There's about four toilets, three urinals over there, and I think it's six showers all together. Oh no, they're wash basins. Four showers and two wash basins. There's your typical shower. And there's your typical wash basin there. Here we come. You come for breakfast? Really? This way? No, you're going the wrong way, man. Come here, come on, this way, watch those, watch them, good lad. Come here, this way, come on, get some breakfast, get some breakfast, come on, come on, what's this? Almond biscuits for Bailey. What's that? Are you coming? Hey, sit. Good lad, there's your breakfast. There now, there. And ham and strawberries for me and a cup of coffee. Right. It's eight o'clock and Bailey's heading out of the park. He's going to do his longest walk. And my longest walk with Bailey. I'm going to walk to Scarborough and we'll retrace some of the steps we did yesterday along to Boggle Hall. But then it will be all new ground after that. So I'll take some photos and do some video. And the forecast is great. So we've had our breakfast, just a light breakfast. So here we are, we beyond the Boggle Hall turn off and we're heading up to Ravenscar. Absolutely beautiful along the cinder path. I was thinking, oh, I'll let him off the lead. And then two minutes later, two mountain bikers came flying by, rang the bell, literally just a few yards before they got to us. So, and I didn't hear them coming up behind us. So you've got to be vigilant and uh, because I'm not sure whether he would chase the mountain biker yeah? <clears throat> because he does have a very strong herding instinct so we'll keep him on the extended lead, I'm sure he's happy so what we've got here, we've got the steps going down to a road a little B road that takes you down to Boggle Hall if you're going to go in a vehicle Boggle Hall is a, a youth hostel and they can get vehicles down there but <coughs> it's uh, there's the signpost there and that's the road coming down so you've got the steps going up and down back onto the cinder path because the cinder path is it's just a slight incline all the way to Ravenscar I think from Ravenscar it's a decline down into Scarborough I think Ravenscar is probably the highest point but he's helping me up the stairs aren't you son an old arched bridge Look at the brickwork on an angle there. That was a feat of engineering when it was built its time. Look how old it is. Beautiful. Widens out now the cinder path. I suppose you could get a vehicle along here. The tide's in now, and there we are, there's Robin Hood's beer over there. I'm heading up towards Ravensworth now, and you can see in the distance there, the caravan site that we had on yesterday on the video, and over there, that's, uh, where is Middlewood Farm? Middlewood Farm will be over there, see where the building is, yeah, with the teleporter in front of it. That would be Middlewood Farm. So we've walked around in a horseshoe, really.
this is where you would pick up the Cleveland Way to walk back to Robin Hood's Bay on the Cleveland Way. Janet and I have walked it a good few times. It brings you down onto the beach, actually, again, back at Boggle Hole. And, well, just a little bit higher up than Boggle Hole. But there you are, there's the, the green keepers looking after the, the golf course down there, cutting the, the grass at the, not sure which hole that one will be. So, I think the 18th is the farther, the one farther down. So, and there's a little road up, I'm just about into Ravens scar now and uh, we'll continue on our journey so here we are at raven scar there's the little centre there and there's a little tea room at the end Cleveland Way is over that way but if we go up here it's got a nice little chainsaw carvings there there, one of the, the conductor for the railway, I think, and the other one will be fishing people, I would imagine. So, there we are. So, these are the steps up onto the platform, the platform that never had a train come to it, I believe. Not sure, I'd have to check the history out, but that was going to be the railway line down there. There's a board over here, it has some information on it. So, we'll just have a look at it. in the track where will it take you there we are that's information there all about the cinder track i thought there was information about the actual train so there's there's them there's the map there that's what we're going to do we've walked from robin hood's bay which is there that's the bit we've done robin hood's bay to raven scar 4.5 miles so now we're heading off to Scarborough, it's another 10 and a half miles. So it's 16 mile in total down. And I think it t brings you out at the castle, so it might be about 15, because the first place we'll come out at is Peace Moon Park. So there we are, we'll head on the rest of our journey. That's interesting, there's a sculpture here, and it says Robin Hood's Bay, five mile, and then Scarborough, 12 mile. So that's an interesting one. I've found the sign here, here it is on the Raven Scar. The, uh, the info. So there's all the info there about Raven Scar. This coastline looks beautiful, mind. And it's going to be a gorgeous day. Interesting that it said four and a half mile from Robin Hood's Bay to Raven Scar and I checked it with my watch and with the pedometer on my watch my watch says 5.4 miles which will be right because I took him for a walk this morning it would be about half a mile each way so he could have his his toilet and what have you and uh, so watch must be pretty accurate for the mileage some very large farms. There's a big turbine for that farm, I presume. Oh, here we've got a helicopter coming over here. And you can see it's a, it's a gradual descent down into Scarborough. I've just been talking to a couple and they said it's actually a lovely walk down into Scarborough. A nice descent. The highest point, evidently, is Raven Scar.
This is only usual. Nice little small hoarding. Just along here. Kiddies trampoline, but I've never seen a slide for hens. There we go. That's a first. You think the hens, Bailey? Huh? What do you reckon? Hmm? Nice. Nice in the stir fry, but a chicken, wouldn't it? Hmm? Come on then. Nice tree out here as well. Lovely building over there. There's a caravan. And it's yours because the steps into it. Oh, look at that tree out there. Beauty. Old bikes with there. That's an idea for old bikes. Our old bikes, we could put plants on them. There we are. Lovely big house there. These were obviously the station houses. Well, the stations I would have thought at one time because that must have been the platform there. Absolutely lovely old wheelbarrows filled with the stations. There we are. That was probably the station clock up there. And then we're back onto the railway line. It's a gorgeous day, you can see the sun shining there, but because we're in the trees, there's all the dapple cheer and it's really nice and cool. And all along here is like a, a peaty stream, so he just keeps popping in there and having a drink of that peaty water. Probably very nice actually, not that I'm going to try it myself, like I'm going to have a bottle of uh, water. So, it is, it's lovely, there's the sun shining on the bracken. Right, we're at the halfway point. We've done eight and a half mile. So now we are, we've, I've just passed the signpost there and it says eight and a half mile to Scarborough. So we're at the halfway point now. And here we've got the nature reserve. And just off the, the cinder track. Beautiful. Got a lot of wildlife flying about as well. Another station house, Clufton Station this one, beautiful. Used to have a tea room as well, but there's apologies there on the gate saying tea room is no longer open, thank you for your custom. Shame I would have had a coffee if it had been open. So anyhow, we'll continue down. There we go, that must have been where all of the real equipment was kept. Looks like a house now. Little drinks bottle, dead handy for him. He just had a nice drink out of that little tree there. So, I've got some chill sticks for him when we get to the other end. And then I've given the odd treat or two while he's been stopping and sitting and being good. He likes to sit on my foot. So, there we go. We'll continue on the rest of our journey. There we are. We've just passed a place called Clufton. Oh, so, yeah. That way and then this is the way forward to Scarborough. If I'd continued on the cinder path, it would bring us to Scolby, to Sainsbury's at Scolby. And then it takes you through all the housing estates and whatever, and you end up at the castle at Scarborough. So I spoke to, there was two forestry people looking after the, doing some chainsaw work actually. And uh, they told us to come up this road, fix the claim way up, and it drops down to the north end of Scarborough. So that's what I'm gonna do. So there we are, we can see the sea again. 
we're heading down towards the Cleveland Way to turn off on the right and I've still kept him on the lead because there's a bit of traffic but I think he's happy enough on the lead in any case he keeps stopping and waiting for me to catch up to him in any case so we'll uh, we'll do a bit more when we get onto the proper Cleveland Way that's it I've come around the corner past this big farm I'm picking the Cleveland Way back up now here and there we are over the hedge near Scarborough Castle That's it, we're back on the clearing way. Come here, Bailey, don't go too far. Wait, that might be a cliff edge there. Come here. I'll keep you on a shorter lead, I think. There we go, there's the sea. And the tide's going out. We should be just about out altogether now, I think. And this is the, the footpath along to the north end of Scarborough. Huge farm at the top of the, the cliffs here, and there, there you can see we're getting closer to the castle. I think I'm about two miles away from the North Pier now. You can see right the way around, the sea is lovely, and there's the beach. There. There we are, information about Scolby Lodge Pond and the bird life that's there. And there he is, he's having to sit down, but God love him. I think uh, he's getting a bit tired. And that's another part of the beach that you don't see, unless you come up onto the Cleveland Bay, because there's the north pier there, there's the castle. And that's where we are, I think about a mile off now. See where I am now, there's the top of the Sea Life Centre over there. There's the beck running down into Scalby, and that's the view from this side. Fabulous. So here's the main point here. This is it, we're just about the end of our walk. I've got him on a, a shorter lead here because there was some dodgy bits on the cliff there when we're walking around to the erosion. He's probably all right to look off the lead a bit, but there we are. There's the pub. Looking forward to going in there. I'm gonna have a nice cup of coffee, pint of soda water, and we'll give him a chill stick and I might have something myself. Scone maybe. Right. There we are, Scalby Mills. And there's the north side, we're going to walk down there, get the bus from Pays One Park. I'll just show you the steps. The steps were quite there. Uh, couldn't film going down, so I thought I'd just show a bit of film of them up over. I wouldn't like to walk down them if they were wet. But there we are, Scalby Mill awaits. There we are, we're walking along the, the North Bay Promenade. There's the train up there. There's the beach. Twice he's tried to get down the steps onto the beach, but it was the stony bit. But there's still no stopping him. We'll have to take him on the beach. You can't bring a dog to the beach and not let it on the beach. So we'll go on the beach now and then we'll go on up for the bus stop. Oh well, he's got half of the beach. There's no dogs beyond this point here, so there's a ramp there. I think I'll go up there. But he's had a good bit of beach there from the Sea Life Centre down over, and we've already walked 15 miles, so I think he's uh, he'll be soon to be tired. No dogs beyond here. Look, there's nobody on. I mean, dog owners are pretty responsible to pick up in any case. We've got a short length of beach there, a great long length of beach here. Nobody's on it. No. Doesn't make sense. There we are, we've walked from the 
top bottom end there along the north side on the promenade that's from the sea life centre of the royal corner right? this is what it is now it used to be just a lovely wood Oh, so we soon going up to the way. Yeah, come on then. Here we are, phase one park, and there's the bus stop there. So come and see what well, I think it's a bus job soon because there's people standing at it. Here's Bailey on the bus. His first trip on the bus, and he seems to be nice and relaxed. There we are. So we're off back to Pilot Floor. Blackwood and tomatoes and mushrooms for tea. And I've just done a starter there of a few mixed veg, fried in butter with a bit of cheese. Starving. And Bailey's going to get some of the bacon and chicken. 